You've been in an accident. You're in Poole Hospital. Going to Cornwall. You're in a ward with lovely Harold. Relax. You're in a neck brace, okay? Hello. Shut up. Think you've done that quite successfully. There were a, cute, a few sort of uh, shocked faces when you said that that was the original story. So thank you for thank you for saving us from that <laughs> from, from a more horrible ending. Um, just wanted to ask. Um, noticed at the end of the credits that it was a prequel to Can film. Did did your film make it to Can? Sorry, say that again. Oh, hello, hello. Hang on. Okay, um, this is really complicated because I'm holding a phone and a microphone and it shouldn't be that complicated really. Uh, I was asking, I noticed at the end of the credits that there was a little um, sticker that said um, prequel to Cannes. Did your film make it to Cannes in the end? Okay, that's cool. I um, just wanted to ask, um, what equipment did you use to make this film, and how did you uh, procure the procure the hospital? Was it filmed in an actual hospital? It was filmed on a, on a day unit, so where people go for sort of physiotherapy and things like that. Um, uh, in West London, so the hospital, and we were allowed to use it weekends because obviously no one can, comes at weekends. Um, and uh, what was the other question? Uh, what cameras did you use? Uh, the red. It was the red for the main uh, hospital stuff, but the, um, the views were all done on the Canon 5D Mark II, um, except for a couple of shots that I did on a little camcorder because we couldn't find any fog. You know, it's a foggy little island, you thought we could find fog, but we couldn't. So the, the, the couple of fog shots which had to be done on fairly low level. Um, uh, digital rates, and then we layered it up so that it, it kept some quality. But happily, you know, it's convenient that the fog happens to be very foggy, so um, that helped a bit. Um, did you get that? Yeah, we did. No, that that was very very helpful. Thank you. No, it, it helps that it's foggy as well. That's really cool. Um, I'm impressed at the red camera. Um, how long did it take you to? Upload and edit that because that footage is a right heifer when you get it on a computer. Um, oh, I don't, uh, that would, uh, I have too many other things to worry about. Someone else was doing all that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but the other thing that is quite interesting about it is that we did five stages of makeup because obviously he has to go through this, the healing process. Um, and so we tested how long it took to do each, each of those black eyes. Um, and then we arranged the whole schedule around how long it took to do, each one took to do. That's awesome. Um, how did you do the stitches? They were really convincing. Wow, that's quite a hobby. <laughs> I'm a strange man, but he's a genius. I've used him again on another short. Um, he's a very very clever with um I also put the stitches in the ear because otherwise there's no interest. You can't see half his injuries when you do the profile shot. Okay. I guess it's I guess it's always the geniuses that are that are quite strange and have have strange hobbies. The other thing that we had enormous fun on the shoot because the, the two girls were so naughty. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't show at all, but they were incredibly naughty the whole
whole time and started playing doctors and nurses and in between us. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Have you got any uh, behind the scenes? Imagine that. Thank you for that. <laughs> contrast there kind of how it really was and how it appears on screen it I mean it's a thoroughly human film and the fact that the experience itself was something that was quite fun that's that's quite heartening um, I'm just going to ask the audience for some questions so bear with me I do have one yeah, hi, I, don't, I don't know if you can hear me but um, it's, it's just to say I, I thought it was a lovely charming film um, I love the twist um, I love the parallel between ships coming in and going out and these two guys um, one thing, uh, and it's, it's an observation really, it's not criticism, um, I would love to see it again, but without the soundtrack over, the musical soundtrack over Harold's um, dialogue. Simply because we know that Harold's being wistful, you don't need that there to underpin it, and it kind of detracts from it, it breaks attention. It really breaks attention between the piece, but that, that aside, it's, it's a fantastic film. Did, did you hear any of that? <laughs> I was going to say, uh, uh, could you come onto the stage and ask yeah. a question? That would be amazing. Mm -hmm. And introduce yourself to Alice. Right, okay. There you go. Hi, Alice. Um, I'm, I'm Nick Pierce. Hi. Uh, hi, yeah. Um, what I was saying was, um, I absolutely loved it. I thought um, it, was a, it was charming, beautifully acted. Um, but, and also, I like the parallel between the ships coming in and going out, you know, and the two guys departing. Um, but the one thing I thought, and it, as I said, this is an observation, really, not a criticism, is that you, I don't think you needed the musical soundtrack over Harold's dialogue because it broke the tension, but it also gave the game away to the audience of, you know, Harold being wistful. Well, you didn't need that, you could hear that in his voice. And uh, I would love to see it again, but without the musical soundtrack over Harold's voice. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thank, well, thanks for listening to me. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Brilliant. I do have uh, one more question. Oh. It always is. It always is. Thank you very much, Lee, for that. I do have one more question. Yes, if you'd like to. If you want to pop up on stage, otherwise, she can't hear you. Uh, ooh, I, <laughs> someone shouted three, but there's definitely way more than three. Uh, I guess, yeah, four, maybe four. No, there's about 80, 90 people here. All right, okay, here's, here's your next question. Hello. Hi, um, I'm George. Um, hello there. Um, it's, yeah, right. Um, I can't, sorry, um, they're, they're wanting me to, this is, this is all very complicated, you see, I'm uh, sat on the stage and in front of all people and I'm extraordinarily shy. Um, yes, sorry, I, I really loved it. Um, the, the question is, is, what, sorry, sorry, oh, they're telling me off now. Um, sorry, jeez. Um, okay, no, honestly, um, it was very claustrophobic, I loved the way the, the, you, you could totally tell that it was, um, I, I don't know, I just felt as though I was lying down and I was trapped. Was that intentional um, or how did you try and create that effect, you know? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, um, the, the whole point of the keyboard, you couldn't, couldn't see anything but the bloody ceiling. Um, and, and 
You're right. Because he, he couldn't really speak because he couldn't really have any news. He didn't have anything to say. And the fact that Harold had so much to say um, was meant to be in the contrast. Um, but it was, it was meant to be on purpose. It was meant to be claustrophobic. It was, it was absolutely marvellous. Thank you. Right. Um, yeah. Right. Sorry. <laughs> Lovely. Um, thank you very, very much uh, for your time, Alice. Uh, we're running over, our cup is running over a little bit here um, at Kino, so we're going to have to end the call. But thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you everyone for watching. Hey, another round of applause for Alice on the phone. <laughs>